So, uh, well done, Group 2. And I'm in a pretty tough position now because I'm also talking about the three sisters. And hopefully with a different twist. So my name is Misha Cherkov, and in this presentation, I will give an overview on companion planting methods of the three sisters and look at the synergy of their roots as well as their friends and foes. For centuries, Native Americans cultivated and developed an agricultural system that was passed from generation to generation in oral form in the story of the three sisters. Corn girl, who was tall and strong, but the hot sun burned her feet so she didn't get enough nutrients. Bean girl, who was tall and weak, so she couldn't stand up, but could make good food. And squash girl, who was short and wide, but her roots were small, so she didn't get enough food as well. When the three sisters joined together, corn girl held up bean girl in her arms. Squash girl shaded corn girl's feet and bean girl fed all of them. We can see how plants from three different families planted together can benefit their species and varieties. As I myself get confused by the terms family, species, and varieties, I will take a step away from plants and take a look at the most close to us canine family. For further clarification, can somebody please name me the most common species in the canine family? Yep. Okay, so, and does anybody here own a dog? Yep, so what breed? Anyone of you? Okay, so uh, an Australian Labradoodle would be a variety of the species of dogs and which is further in the canine family. Now I'll go back to the three sisters and look at Bean Girl. Beans are in the Fabaceae or legume family, which consists of about 20,000 species and 400 varieties. The, as we learned in the Agrotech Academy, the nitrogen fixing root nodules aren't a part of the bean root. Instead, they're home fire bacteria that work symbiotically to exchange uh, carbohydrates. And nodules help the plant utilize nitrogen effectively. Now we go on to corn grow. Corn or maize is the same thing, and both are in the Fabaceae or grass family, which consists of 12,000 species and six major varieties. The most common being dent corn, the most common field corn grown inside the United States, also used for cattle feed and sometimes moonshine. <laughs> Indian or flint corn, the colorful variety, uh, used for cornmeal and decoration. Pod corn, the first descendant of original corn. Sweet corn, the type eaten on the cob. Flower corn, used for flour. And popcorn. Last but not least, there is squash or pumpkin, both in the Cucurbitase family, which consists of 975 separate species. And there are 150 varieties of pumpkins and 100 varieties of squash. Squash are categorized seasonally and depending on they're harvested either into summer or winter squash. Now let's look at the history of the three sisters planting methods. The tradition of calling these crops the three sisters originated with the Haudenosaunee around the Great Lakes in the northeastern United States and Canada. All three seeds are planted together on the same mound in the Iroquois planting method. This avoids uh, waterlogging of the plant roots and helps with drainage, which is important in this region because it receives abundant rainfall in the summer. Southwest dry farmed areas like Hopi and Arizona and portions of the Navajo Nation, the sisters are planted together as well as in separate fields. This three sisters are planted in separate fields to maximize for limited water and planting goes from left to right. Uh, corn, then beans, then squash. And then every season, you move each crop to the right. This is so that the beans, I mean, that the corn and squash can benefit from the nitrogen fixed soil that the beans grew in. The three sisters are important to early American diets, now as well as it was in early history. Corn provides fiber and carbohydrates, beans provide protein, and squash or pumpkin provide vitamin A. Review the sister, three sisters' history in order of appearance. 10,000 years ago, there was no such thing as corn, just a wild grassy plant called teosinte 
This plant looks a little like the corn that we know today, but ancient farmers, and now what we know as Mexico, cultivated the maize by choosing which kernels to plant. The first beans were cultivated in Peru over 8,000 years ago. But the ones I will mention right now are called tepary beans. They're the first ones to be grown in the southwestern United States and northern Mexico. The oldest cultivation of pumpkin seeds were discovered in, uh, on the highlands of Mexico 7,500 years ago. And they were held very little resemblance to the sweet, bright, and orange variety we are familiar with. They were about the size of baseballs and were bitter and produced a nauseous effect. The health of the plants depends on the health of the roots. The, all plants have a standard 45 degree angle off of the lateral roots. But what about size? Corn falls in between a deep and shallow root system. This is because deeper roots may reach up to five feet into the soil, about my height. And, but most actual development happens in the upper three feet of soil. Beans have roots ranging from 12 to 24 inches, but deeper feeder roots may actually reach up to 48 inches into the soil, about my mid thigh. And uh, squash have relatively short roots ranging from 12 to 24 inches. In the murky darkness of the soil, there dwell both friends and foes. First, let's look at the friends. The three sisters now have adopted a younger brother called Mycorrhiza. Franciszek, it was discovered by Franciszek Komensky, a Polish scientist in the late 19th century. The word Mycorrhiza means fungal root. And Mycorrhiza has to establish a symbiotic relationship with the plant since it cannot photosynthesize, so it cannot fix its own carbon. Consecutively, it latches onto the plant roots and uh, receives all of its necessary carbohydrates from the plant. In return, it absorbs nutrients from the soil, which are then passed along to the plant. Soil and water pollution sponsored the appearance of a villain, Pythium. Root, pythium is also known as root rot and water mold, and it affects over 90% of all uh, soils today in the United States, uh, and was discovered in the 1930s on golf courses. It's so widespread since it is distributed by a different, no, but it's distributed by the transportation of already uh, infected soils, contaminated water, and by shore flies or gnats. The first symptoms of pythium are the circular spots on the plant stems and leaves. Further, uh, the whole plant starts wilting and then it dies. At this point, you can do nothing but spray harmful pesticides on it. But before it infects the plants, you can eliminate it by having good drainage of the soil, water purification, and uh, good uh, and increasing oxygen levels. As Pliny the Elder, a Roman naturalist and military commander, wrote in the first century of our time, the master's eye is the best fertilizer. The indigenous people of the United States developed a food system that efficiently utilized their landscape to provide a relatively nutritious diet. The principle of companion planting is still popular nowadays, especially with the boom of organic farming. The buzzword is now intercropping, and the magic recipe has three ingredients. Uh, you plant friends close together, you rotate crops, and attract insects to fight pests. To summarize my presentation, I'd like to highlight four things. One of the three, number one, the three sisters planting method is relevant today in providing healthy soils and healthy gardening and abundant crops. Two, these varieties are six uh, of the six, no, the varieties of successful species are constantly growing in numbers. Three, both natural development and human activity bring new allies and foes to the plants. And four, the abundance of knowledge obtained through human history paired with today's scientific uh, results and lab methods have advanced the knowledge and helped preserve biodiversity and increase food security. Thank you. I also have handouts like questions uh, and I'll bring them over for anybody who wants them. 
another chock full presentation. I hear that we could take one question for Nisha. Okay. Yep. Maybe add uh, some more natural stuff to the soil, such as earthworms, because they actually improve the uh, the oxygen levels of the soil, as well as using less pesticides. And maybe look into some things as such as composting, which will benefit everything, including the environment. Okay. Okay.